Hello and welcome to another edition of Forkful of Noodles. I am Krish Mohan. That's what we've been told to do. And not just in libraries, movie theaters, or nurseries. And that last one is really bullshit. Babies love loud noises, so when I come into a nursery with a full marching band to celebrate new life, Nurse Ratchet shouldn't be telling me to shh. It's counterproductive. We have to watch what we say all the time. What we say can land us in a heap of trouble. It can get us booted off college campuses, fired from jobs, and even get us killed. But all those reactions are slapping the First Amendment right in the face, telling it to shh. The First Amendment, for those of you that's forgotten what it is, is the freedom of speech, expression, religion, and the press without fear of legal persecution. This amendment is huge. It gives us the right to express ourselves without being jailed, but that doesn't seem to be the case. The politically correct movement has come down to make sure that we aren't using certain words and bringing up certain topics. Don't talk about race because it's too controversial. Don't talk about religion because one of those people might be here. And don't talk about physical or sexual abuse because you're being a real Debbie Downer right now. But if we don't talk about these harsh or ugly topics, how will we know that they exist? But there's more to this than just being able to say whatever you want. There's also how you say things. If you say something like, wow, Diane, you are really pulling off that dress. Am I right, guys? Means, hey, Diana, you know what? You're pulling that dress off pretty well. Huh? Way to go, girl. But if you use that same phrase, wow, Diane, that's a great dress. Am I right, guys? Means you're a dick. There's also personal accountability for every word that you say because words have power. So much power that they can drive action. A rousing speech can gather a whole group of outcasts and give them notice and let them be heard. Speeches made by great heroes like MLK, JFK, and Ferris Bueller. But it can also lead to mass killings and genocides, like in the case of Hitler and the fairy tale facts that the Republican Party uses against Planned Parenthood. The First Amendment doesn't give you the right to take someone's life over a difference of your beliefs. Neither does the Second Amendment, but it does give you the ability. The right to bear arms gives the right of an American to own a gun just in case the government goes rogue and we all need to rise up and take them out. But it also says that we need a well-regulated militia. The Second Amendment literally calls for regulation over something that only has one purpose. Killing. Guns are primarily used as a killing tool. That's why they were invented. It doesn't matter what the reason was, whether it was war or protection or safety. The intent was to kill. Now, there is another reason that people who support guns use. You know, well, 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 man, I like to use it for sport. You know, I like to take my daughter's boyfriend out into the woods, and we just like to fire off some rounds into some inanimate objects. You know, because it's like killing, but it ain't. But it lets that boy know that it can. That argument even makes even less sense. And it was only ever justified in the book The Most Dangerous Game. That just means you like to keep score of things you kill. That argument has nothing to do with the Second Amendment, so you might want to reconsider using that as a form of validity. The Second Amendment gets a lot of attention when there's over 300 shootings in one year. There's a lot of talk about gun regulation, whether we should arm everybody or ban it forever. Arming everybody isn't the answer, but neither is banning it. Banning guns will just lead us to find other ways of killing each other. We invented the curved blade, the Molotov cocktail, throwing a guy out a window, the Ang Lee Hulk, and the board with a nail in it. We're creative little apes, and we will find a way to kill each other. It's a primal urge. We never really needed guns. We were doing just fine in the killing department without the aid of guns. I mean, we were crushing it in the weapons game with spears, trebuchets, Greek fire. And the first guns kind of sucked. It took like 
eight and a half minutes to reload them, and by that time, somebody had put your bayonet through four different parts of your body. But the fact is, we decided to continue using guns, and we have guns today, so it's time that we acted responsibly with them. We bring up policies and regulations, which are necessary, but we need to do more. We need to start making everyone accountable for these debts, just like we do with the First Amendment. When a black person starts screaming about how every white person is the devil, we all look at every other member of the black community and say, what are we going to do about this behavior? If we are going to make a whole group of people responsible for the actions of one person, when they say something offensive, then we need to do the same thing with guns. The accountability falls on the shooter, the gun maker, the gun owner, the biathlon contestants, the gun shop owner, and most importantly, the NRA. All these people need to have their feet held to the flame of every life that's been extinguished, and we say, what are we going to do about this behavior? We also need to start talking about how to get people to not want to kill each other. There's a reason a person picks up a gun and fires it. It could be their quality of life, mental illness, the NRA beaming thoughts about using guns constantly in our life, the gun safe at your pap pap house. But if we can focus on how to make our lives better and everybody around us happier, we won't have to see mass shootings as much. As freeing as it is, the First Amendment is restricted by societal and moral rules. You can go into a Starbucks and yell, you fucking faggot, but you shouldn't. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. That's a lesson I learned in the fourth grade. That guy just proved that he was a bigot and a homophobe in a time when gay marriage just passed through the Supreme Court. Let him say it, but you don't have to hang out with the guy. The First Amendment also lets you tell that guy to shut the hell up, or better yet, ask him why he feels that way. Was it your father? It was probably because your father. So if we're restricted in the first and arguably most important of the amendments, then why can't we have some rational restrictions on the second one? Just because you can own a gun doesn't mean that you should. And no one needs to bring a gun into a coffee shop. You can get your extra shot of espresso by saying please rather than flashing your Glock at the barista and saying motherfucker. You catch more flies with honey than you do by firing your AR at them. The First Amendment is one of the most important amendments. It gives us the right to express ourselves and what's on our mind without the Second Amendment being involved. The First Amendment doesn't work if no one is willing to have a conversation. Think of how many lives you could save if we just ask the question, why? What is motivating this person to take up arms and to take a life? Is it the words and thoughts of another person? How do we make sure that the toxicity of misunderstood hatred is cured in our society? None of these questions can be answered if we're not willing to push ourselves to talk about this. The power we carry in the words of our speeches is far superior than any bullet from any gun. The First Amendment is so powerful that it allows us to misquote the Second Amendment to prove that we need a gun. But if someone looks at you and tells you you can't talk about this because you're at a dinner or a bridal shower, just remind them that if we don't talk about this, then eventually the First Amendment will permanently go into shh. That's been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you for tuning in. You can check out all my live albums, tour dates, and you can sign up for my free email newsletter at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Thanks for getting into it. Mm -hmm.